decided to weigh the wheel on the cart motor because it's a two foot wheel by two inches with 16 magnets on it. It's the one I've been using for a while. So I wanted to see what it weighed and it's 33.5 pounds. So the wheel's 33 pounds with just the axle in it and doesn't have the pulley or nothing on it. So so that's for the record there. It's 33.5 pounds. I put the wheel back on. I know I said I wasn't going to shoot any more of the cart motor, uh, but some questions come up and before the large box motors built, I figured I would use the cart motor to, to answer these questions. Um, cart motor currently has nine coils on it. Um, the wheel was 33 pounds. And uh, what I'm going to do is run a test and remove the coils and put them back on one at a time. I'm not at physically going to remove them, so that may skew the test slightly. What I'm going to do is disconnect um, the trigger ground so the coil is not being activated. And that way, at least the one coil that is working um, one at a time, one, two, three, four, I, I'll be able to know how much push one coil is providing uh, and and the, the iron in the other coils may skew it slightly but um, I don't think it's a big deal uh, we, we're just trying to get a baseline so uh, and a couple times I've had questions come up about the clearance well if you can see on this model hey, there's a considerable amount of clearance there it's uh, it's not really what I would even consider close unlike the box motor where I didn't have to worry about this part wobbling in this design it wobbles in the box motor it's anchored on both sides so that clearance is a lot closer than that even but the small box motor is only running on six coils this is running on nine coils and the wheel is two foot so the wheel on the small box motor is 20 inches something like that so let's uh get started on this uh well hang on a minute i have to move this generator which is what i call the hernia because it's a three-phase motor that I was running tests on uh, early tests as a generator. Too much iron. It's a three horsepower motor, so it it makes power real quick. Let's start this. Um, I'm gonna start it real simple. Just one push. And that's all it really takes to get it started. The vibration got a sympathetic oscillation with the coils putting 11 amps into the batteries oops at 2.1 amps so if you notice right off the get-go it's it's already at two amps so like I said it's not quite as efficient as the new design so 13 14 amps I'm not gonna let it get up all the way to speed because it's a pretty hard thing to stop once it gets up to speed I just wanted to get the bearings warmed up and uh, give it a little spin before I start trying to run slow test on it. So just for you guys' reference, 150 volts, 8,700 microfarads a piece, or 26,100 microfarads. Uh, 20 volts at 196,000 microfarads on the output, and the input's 26,100 microfarads. So, as you can see, it'll get up a pretty, pretty quick clip there. 
uh, 15 amps into the batteries. Now the small box motor was more efficient. It was putting 16 at 2. It's almost 3 amps. So you can see just that little vibration, the difference that's being had, that's happening by not having this stuff locked into place. Um, the resistors are 4.7, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, where I went all the way to 5K on the small box motor. So that's enough to get them warmed up here. So, um, no need to do a speed check. It, it'll just keep climbing. It'll go th above 1,000 RPM uh, if I let it. And obviously, we don't want that to happen or take forever for it to stop. So, all right, I'm going to get uh, my tack and we'll try to get some readings here. Now, I pushed it to get it started here. We're running one coil. 98 so 1 point uh, 1 or point 3 sorry point 0.13 amps putting 1 amp into the battery 135 volts we want to let it stabilize here it might not push this wheel. This wheel is a little heavier than the previous one, the one that would run more than a coil. It's still dropping, so it doesn't look good. So I would say no, one coil will not drive a 33 pound wheel. Yeah, I'm going to call it. It won't do it. So let's uh, go to two. Now we're going to try two coils. Now we're going to give us a push. So now that's two coils. Oops. And it's moving 74 RPM. So it is pushing it. And it's maintaining 74 RPM with two coils. So two coils are running a 33 pound wheel. So we got nine of them. So two's capable of pushing it in the sequential using the sequential concept two coils is pushing it 0 0.2 0 0.2 amps at 132 volts at 1.6 amps into the batteries hey that's impressive okay so there you go it's absolutely pushing that wheel now so two Two is sufficient. We got three, and they're still sequential. Only this one's firing first, then this one, or that one's firing, then that one's firing, then that one's firing. So there's a sequential fire. This is three coils for my home brew guys. So here we go. 
and give it a push, small push. Uh, 2.6 amps, and or I'm sorry, that's 0.2. It's actually bouncing between 2.29, 290 milliamps, and 300 milliamps. It's putting two amps in, into the batteries, 2.2 amps, with three coils. It's 47 before. 74, I'm sorry. Now it's 75. Sorry about that guys, it's it's hard to keep it on that spot. I don't have my mount on it anymore. So well, it looks like 75.2 RPMs. And that's what it is. 320 milliamps. 2.3 amps into the batteries at 130 volts. I've added this coil, which is four. So now this one's first. This one's first. Then this one, then this one, then this one. So it's on the opposite side. It doesn't really matter which side it's on. So let's try this again. Now this is four. And 400 milliamps, 430 milliamps, 129 volts, 3.3 amps into the batteries. And she's climbing. So I saw you were right. Four coils pushing the wheel. And it's pushing it pretty good. So let's see what four coils would give me. Oh yeah, big difference. That one coil means it's climbing perfect three coils is enough to make that sequential climb so and that has to do with the spacing of the magnets on the wheel and you have to have enough magnets to complete that space so it's a constant push and this is awesome 200 and, oops, 224 RPM, 0.78 amps, 5 amps into the batteries at 126 volts. So 750 milliamps, less than an amp, we're putting 5 times the amps. The voltage is different, so you have to calculate it out in watts, but five times as much with four. So let's give it a second and see what kind of speed we can get out of it. It's climbing. It's climbing slow, but it's definitely climbing. It's steadily picking up speed, just like with the nine coils. Uh, it will climb above a thousand and just keep creeping up, and that's what's happening with four coils. So it's running 458 RPM and still climbing. That's 462. So you can see it's slowly climbing, but we're putting one amp in at 124 volts, 
and we're putting six amps into the charge batteries. So now it's six times the amperage going into the batteries. At batteries at 12 volts, the input at 124 volts. Um, it should almost be a 10 times. So to be over unity, it would have to be 10 times the amount uh, because we're running at 12 volts, 120 volts input, 10 times. It, so, just a rough estimate is it's 60% efficient with four coils, roughly. So, but it's still climbing, so. I'm not going to just wait for it because you guys can see what's happening. Uh, add another coil, it's going to jump up a couple hundred milliamps, go maybe one or two hundred RPM faster, and uh, put maybe two or three amps into the batteries. So that pattern's been repeated here. So you can see, LISO, you're right, four coils is a good push. It will take off with four. Nine, it's screaming. Uh, the new wheel at 33 inches will have 12 coils. Now, I'm only running 120 volt. I can't wait to see what you guys running 240 volts overseas are going to do with this. We're getting close, guys. We can get this drive system working right. There are low drag generators that are going to do the job. We're going to make this work. This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel, signing out. Putting out a, a video for my friends in the Homebrew Energy Forum. Thanks, guys.